disasters have done more than just destroy parts of the country's vital infrastructure. They've put a dent in the entire Japanese economy. Now the question is, can Japan's economy survive this crisis? Here's Stephanie Elam. The devastation in Japan seems to be never-ending. The number of people dead or missing continues to grow. Aftershocks are still jolting the nation, and many roads, bridges, and ports are wiped out. Analysts say the Japanese economy will survive, but it's not going to be easy. The fact of the matter is that the timing of this couldn't be worse. Japan just emerged from a recession, and even though it's the world's third largest economy, the country used to be number two until China bumped Japan last year. But one analyst sees an upside. He says the effect of the earthquake and tsunami will be contained. And I think the, the Japanese economy will take a substantial blow, no question about that. But it, and it will recover, but it's going to take a, a year and a half or so. I think in terms of the uh, impact outside of Japan, it's going to be very minor, uh, and it's going to be particularly small in the United States. But many countries will feel the effects when it comes to goods exported from Japan. Several companies have been forced to temporarily stop production at some point since the crisis began, and they're well-known companies like Sony, Toshiba, Texas Instruments, Canon, Toyota, and Honda, all impacted by Japan's severely damaged infrastructure. That's disrupting the supply chain, and it means some items could be in short supply, like the iPad 2. Ford is even warning that it's having a hard time getting one ingredient from Japan that's used to make black and red paint. All of this is a problem for a nation whose growth is dependent upon exports. The World Bank says exports make up 12% of Japan's GDP. But there's another concern for the Japanese economy tourism. Delta is temporarily cutting flights to Japan because the demand just isn't there. The airline says bookings to Japan have dropped significantly since the earthquake and tsunami. And the ripple effect is huge. From airlines to hotel chains to the local stores, restaurants, and other businesses that count on tourism, the lack of visitors is costly. 7% of their uh, GDP is tied to travel and tourism. Uh, it's a significant amount of money, and a lot of that's going to go away because of what we're seeing, because people will not travel to Japan at this point in time until the radiation issue is sorted through and people understand what the real threat is today. I think once that gets handled, you're going to see a fairly quick recovery. But much of that quick recovery in tourism is going to depend on the nuclear situation. This isn't like other disasters where we're just talking about physical damage. In this case, the fear of radiation will keep tourists away. It's the fear of the unknown and the unseen. If I can see a building that's fallen over, I see it, I get it, I know what happened. But if there's something floating around in the air and I don't know what that is, I might be concerned. But long term, the outlook for Japan is good. Eventually, the country will rebuild and that will help fuel an economic recovery. Analysts point out that Japan has the money to fund those efforts. It's also a technologically advanced and well-educated country. So while a recovery may be a very hard thing to imagine at this point, the consensus is that Japan will come back from this eventually. Stephanie Elam, CNN, New York. Well, you know, John, it is hard to imagine how Japan can pick up the pieces from such widespread death and destruction, but it certainly will. Yeah, we hope so. And when we come back, a look at Japan's future one year from now.